So now we have a sense of the equations that represent capacitors and inductors uh, as it pertains to circuit theory. Let's see how we can apply them. So what I have for you is our first problem. <clears throat> I've drawn up a current to voltage characteristic, or I guess it's not even a current to voltage, it's a current as time passes by characteristic. So on this x-axis is time in milliseconds, and on this y-axis is current in amps, all right? So this is actually gonna represent the current that's passing through an inductor as time goes by, all right? And they're gonna tell you that the inductor value is 50 millihenry, all right? So once they tell you all of this stuff, they say, draw the voltage waveform, draw the voltage as it passes through the inductor with respect to time, all right? So how do we do this? If I want to find the voltage on an inductor, how about I just come back to the fundamental idea that represents voltage for an inductor? The voltage on an inductor, all right, is equal to L di dt. So what I have here is this is the current through the inductor as time passes. All I have to do is take the derivative of all of this and multiply by L, and then I have the voltage in itself. So this kind of is broken into segments. Each of these pieces is linear, all right? They're not like they're quadratic or anything like that. I'd have to give you a formula if they were anything outside of being linear, all right? So I guess so I could say each of these pieces could be represented by their own little, um, each segment could be represented by their own little piece, one, two, and three. So this one, this one, and this one. And if I take the derivatives of each of those segments multiplied by L, then I'll be able to peacefully, I guess piecewise, put together a voltage function. So let me put up a voltage graph and I will have, if that's current, then this will be voltage. If this is milliseconds, I want to keep it consistent with milliseconds. And if this is 60 seconds, that's going to be segment one. Then, so I got 60, 100, and 140. 60, put 100 here, and 140. Okay, great. So, I guess for segment one, let's roll. For segment one, we have this piece, and I want to find the derivative of it, all right? You got to remember that the derivative of a linear piece is basically just a slope. So di is going to represent the y part, dt is going to represent the x part, y over x, rise over 1. Then I have 6, I guess I'll say di, dt for segment one, it's going to be 6 over, and that's 60. Okay, now the 60 is going to be in milliseconds, so it's going to be equal to 6 over 60 was at 110, so 0.1, and it's going to be k, where the m has become a k when you put that, um, bring it up to the top. All right, it doesn't matter what units are right now because we're not done here. This is just a differential. All right, what we have to do is to get the voltage is multiplied by uh, L. So I'm going to say VL is going to be 50 millihenry, that's what the L is, 50 m times by this value 0.1k, and then the k and the m are gonna cancel. So 50 times by 0.1 is gonna be five, k times m is just gonna be one. So I have five volts in segment one. The whole time it's gonna be five volts. That's all the statement is saying. So note this is not like 5t or 5t squared or whatever it may be. This is just a constant. And a constant expressed on a graph is just a straight line. So if I come here and I put five, then I'll have a straight line just like that voltage is constant while the current is changing all right otherwise you could say uh, this current was changing from 0 to 6 in 60 um, 60 milliseconds it was changing nice and linearly and that produced a voltage of 5 that entire time all right awesome so that's the first leg let's look at the second leg uh, leg 2 put it right here uh, the derivative of this is still gonna be my slope my slope is gonna be 6 to negative 4 that's gonna be a slope or I guess a drop of, uh, this is my second segment, is that negative 10 over, and that's gonna be a run of 60 to 100, that's 40 milliseconds, okay? So I got negative 10 over 40. And that is gonna give me, what is that? 10 over four is 0 0.25, 0 0.25 negative with a K at the front, all right? So here we are. We've got the derivative, and now we just got to find the voltage. The voltage on that segment, 2, this would be segment 1, it's going to be 50 milli times by 0.25k with a negative. And that's going to be, let's see what we have there, 50 times by 0.25, 12.5. 
12.5, negative 12.5, and then the 1 is going to, or I guess k and m are going to hash out to become just 1. So negative 12.5 volts is what we have on that whole leg 2. So on the leg 2, from 60 to 100, let's just bring it down a little bit. Say this is negative 12. I know it's not really drawn scale, but it does not matter. Draw a straight line that's constant, okay? So while the current has been changing from 6 to negative 4 in the 40 milliseconds, the uh, voltage on the inductor was actually negative 12 the whole time. Interesting thing, you get a jump discontinuity here. From In that instance of 60, you go from 5 volts to negative 12 volts in an instant, all right? Mind you, the statement that we had before, I guess when we looked at the integral, was the current cannot change instantly through an inductor, which we have. That makes sense with respect to this graph. Never do you see a jump discontinuity on this leftmost graph. But that means nothing about the voltage, which can change instantly for an inductor. Not for a capacitor, but for an inductor. All right, please keep those things separated in your head. Awesome. So that was the second leg. Let's look at the third leg. Put it right here. Um, DIL DT for the third leg is going to be, what is that? Uh, negative 4 to 0, so that's positive 4. And then 100 to 140 is going to be 40, and that's milliseconds. So we're going to get, what is that, 0 0.1 again, and the K. So that means the voltage on that third leg is going to equal, uh, actually, if, if this is the same jazz, it's going to be 5 again. So 5 volts again. So 5 volts is going to be from the 100 to the 140. So I'll put 5 right there, do a little dot 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 give me a jump discontinuity and voila this right here on the left on the right is the voltage waveform that is corresponding to this current waveform okay so it's like section one section two and section three and there you have it that's it now please note right here at the end it stops abruptly all right it's not like i have anything on this left graph at the 140 it's not like i have anything continuing if i had something continuing then i could finish this but because i don't have anything continuing there i don't want to draw anything i don't want to draw this dropping down or anything like that i just want to leave it alone if i had let's put it in green if i had it continue i guess straight let's just say that actually you know what i do and i'll put it right there on that on that block if I had to continue straight like that, then what will happen is that's now constant, and this would drop discontinuity, and this would be equal to zero as well. Okay, so please don't get jump discontinuities um, misconstrued at the end of their behaviors. All right. So this is our first question, and this is just kind of showing you how to go back and forth between the current and voltage on an inductor. Next, we'll take a look at a capacitor.